So um, this morning we will spend some time talking about um, something that I, for some very uh, miraculously forgot. Um, because it's a really um, skanda, I think we sort of rushed through. But Datu and the Ayatana. I don't know whether we will even have time to talk about the Ayatanas. And I should say, actually, I, I don't have much things to offer on any of these because my knowledge is very rusty and so lazy to go to uh, reading the text uh, to prepare. Um, and also it's really um, challenging to um, try to articulate this, uh, um, especially if there's um, someone who is quite uh, new to this. For those who have done some Abhidharma studies, I think you will know um, a little bit what we are talking. <clears throat> but first I need to tell you this. Um, You may wonder why we need to study Abhidharma. I think we have, we, we, I have said this um, in, you know, in, you know, during the past two days, I have said this in different ways, but I want to emphasize this again. Um, Abhidharma is studied in the Tibetan, well, of course, actually Abhidhamma, as I said, authority of the Abhidhamma should really be with the Theravadan tradition. They really study a lot. But um, <clears throat> in the Tibetan tradition, this is where we, I'm coming from, we, we do study this, and we put a lot of, I mean, we do to a certain extent, not as much as to the Madhyamika, and that's really um, uh, something that we need to be aware of. <clears throat> but understandably, also, um, I think it has a lot to do with also uh, the society that you live in. In places like uh, Tibet or probably elsewhere like Thailand, Sri Lanka, it's a sort of a Buddhist society. So, um, so, to, what do you call it, um, because their emphasis is more on practice. By and large, you can say, <clears throat> because emphasis is really on, you know, practice. So I guess, uh, I'm, you know, a lot of, um, I mean, uh, more emphasis on, like in Tibet's case, uh, subjects such as Madhyamika and uh, Samadhi. Now, 
in today's modern world, somehow the emphasis is more on samadhi. So not even with the Madhyamika, the view-related subject. So, because people are more interested in doing something, right? Like meditating, <clears throat> calming mind, because it has, a, I guess, an immediate, um, hands-on, tangible result, so to speak. So Abhidhamma probably is getting even more forgotten. Um, but I think it is important for people to know that um, this study is uh, important because um, As I have been repeating this, the goal of the study and the practice of the Dharma is to see the truth. And by which it me, uh, in Buddhism, when we talk about a realization of the truth, in other words, we are talking about a realization of anatta, shunyata, selflessness, because that's where everything boils down to that. Whether an oasis is an illusion or not, it's not that relevant. Whether <clears throat> life, I mean, you know, like the job, the, you know, all of this, you know, like job, pension plan, you know, we can talk about the illusory and the uncertainty aspect of this. To a certain extent, those things help. But at the end of the day, understanding the anatta, shunyata, that is where everything boils down to. So we now realize the identity of so-called self is what we need to decipher, what we need to deconstruct. Um, this uh, Atman, Self, something that we think is permanent, something that we just take, take for granted as something permanent, independently existing Self that need to be scrutinized, that need to be analyzed. And um, studying Abhidharma in the, in the um, study Abhidharma by using techniques such as um, categorizing and, uh, how should I put it, um, deciphering the phenomena or the world or the universe in uh, categories such as, you know, the Savara, Skandhas. This really helps. And I'm assuming that today the approach to uh, Atman the presumption of Atman, presumption of Self, um, projection of Self, has become even more sophisticated. And it is because of this reason why there is a lot of um, mental issues, mental problems. And because of that, of course, the physical problems, the war and economy and, and ecology also. I mean, in, in the one hand, we talk about how the ecology is deteriorating, but on the other hand, I have to admit, if a dictator tells me no more plastic from tomorrow, I'm going to grumble. 
Because, you know, where to put my toothpaste? You know, when I travel, plastic bags are nice. You know, it's light and, you know, stuff like that. And why, why, do, I, why do I like this convenience? Because this independent, you know, uh, my independent, in, you know, permanently existing self lacks it that way. I want to be comfortable, I want to be efficient, I want to be, yeah, I want to be not taken for a ride. All of that. <clears throat> so I would say actually today more than ever, deciphering, deconstructing, uh, the self and the cause of the self is important more than ever. This is why the Abhidharma um, need to be visited. N not just by the Buddhists, but those people who really uh, care for, you know, world, projection of the world, the projector of the world, observer of the world, of now and the, uh, you know, the future observer of the world. Okay, so Datu. <clears throat> now this is a really big term. So I, I think we will spend quite a lot of time on Datu, I have a feeling. Mm, because the word Datu, I was talking I was asking somebody whether the word Datu exists in Hindi in your day-to-day -day situation. And you he said yes. And I was asking when a two rickshaw driver talk about using that word, Datu, what is in their head, <coughs> head you know? Probably not, nothing much, you know. Probably they don't much pay. They don't pay much atten attention. Just as the Tibetans, when we say, uh, "How are you?" We use the word "kukam," che kukam kukam," and we just use the word. We don't think about it. But if you really pay some attention. There's an element when, when they ask you, when they ask, how are you? The actual word, you know, like when they use that word, part of the word is quite interesting. It's really talking about how is your datu? How is your datu? Now that's, you know, how is your datu, you know? sort of how the balance of the datu, where is your datu? It could, be, it could be really approached in many ways. Where is your datu? Is your datu um, dull, perky, irritating? Is your datu Insensitive, sensitive, so on and so forth. I think the old English usage, which Indians use this, I think, I only hear this from the Indians. They call it morning constitu con constitution, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, when they say morning walk. Right? Do they use in England morning constitution? Const Constitutional. I'm giving you these words just to set up, to understand the Datu. Okay, Datu is a, quite a big, it's a, it's a, um, if you understand the Datu, you may watch the movie Matrix in a different way, the first part. Matrix, Datu. 
Um, I want to use also, it may be not that correct, but I want to use it anyway, the word dimension. I think it has an element of datu, dimension, when we talk about a dimension. And when I say dimension, we are talking about, see right now, I am in this dimension, in this, in this big life that I have, big life, I'm in this dimension of being a sentient being who look at, in, look in front and then think, oh, there's about 200, 100 human beings. This is flower. This is rose. This is drinkable. That is the dimension in general I am in. And today, this morning, spe specifically, what kind of dimension? That's different. Okay, of course, I'm a human, human dimension. But this morning, specifically, my dimension is how am I ever going to explain this Datu? How can I make this understandable? And I was reading some of the Shastras written by the Indian scholars of the past. Just irritation that Datu was coming. Just so difficult to understand. Written like seven, you know, a thousand years ago. So <clears throat> Datu, dimension, sphere. Okay, the same word Datu is used by the generally Mahayana, but specifically Tantra, to denote, I mean, to uh, refer to Buddha nature. Especially people like Uttar um, Maitreya use this word. Kam, rikam, rikam. Um, and that is so interesting. So when we talk about that, I think we are talking about something like, okay, not, pic not a complete picture, okay? The word Datu is really difficult to translate for me. But I'm trying my best to give you some ideas. So in, in this kind of situation, the word Datu is something to do with a species also. Species. So, um, oh, this is, what? This species belongs to cats. Even some of them don't look like a cat. Doesn't matter, but they have a cat species. You know, a reptile. What do you call it? This kind of species. Um, I don't know, this is just my guess. Probably the ancient Indian, this uh, concept of a varna, varna, right? It's caste, caste. Yeah, may have something to do with it, but this, I leave it with you. But according to people like Sharvaka, I mean, people like Maitriya, now this is the Ma Maitriyas and, and the Tantrikas, many, yeah, all of them, they think that we are all, not just you and me, insects, butterflies, dogs, everyone, hell beings, God, we are all one species, and it's called Buddha. Rikkam, they use this word. We, there's a one, one thing that we are equally belong to that species. Yeah? Maybe the species is not really the right word, but I think it may help you to understand what we are talking. Therefore, that Mahayana and that Bodha Bajarayana, they loosely use this word a lot. For instance, like a Dharma Datu. Dharma Datu. Uh, Padma Datu. Ratna Datu. 
Oh, so many. You know, like um, Datu. Uh, sometimes, and therefore, Datu also refers to dwelling place. Like where things happen. Where things happen. Many times, the word Datu is used as a used as a name for a like to say dharma center right like in america i think um chogem tumbuchi use dharma datu as his so in this you know some many times like um, datu where things happens and this is also beautiful because especially if you are coming from tantric point of view or a mahayana point of view it doesn't really matter a person may be a very loving and kind, a person may be very angry and greedy. These two are equally living in that Datu of Buddha. So when we talk about equanimity, equanimity, equality, is not really like a today's, oh, you know, what do you call it? Multicultural diversity? Diversity? Not at all like this, huh? Today's diversity is just like you just have to look different, but you have to all think in one, right? That's, that's, the, <laughs> that's the diversity that people are talking about. You have to all think in one way, all have to, you know, follow one value. We are not talking about like that. We are talking about it doesn't matter. You could have anger, you have a jealousy, you have a pride, you can have a love and compassion, you have a bodhicitta. All this arises, dwells, and lives within the space of the Dharma Dhatu. Okay, that's how the Tantra people will talk about. Okay, I'm going right to the top first since most of the, you are quite familiar with the Mahayana teachings. <clears throat> um, okay. Datu. Um, and, don't forget, these Datus gets influenced by gets influence and the influence become quite, uh, what do you call it, solid. Um, we are talking about karma now, karmic formation. Um, so, Yeah, so I, I think I said yesterday, if you are a cat, temporarily, you have a cat datu, and you will never ever read New York Times. And they will not understand it that way. It's just the datu is like this, datu. Also, this is the sort of one angle of the datu I wanted to share. Um, okay, now in Abhidharma, to study these Datu, uh, quite uh, nicely, um, okay, Um, <clears throat> presented in something called 18 Datus, 18. Um, some say that um, the Abhidharma masters, such as Vasubandhu, or many others, by the way, I'm, you know, as I said, I'm more familiar with the Vasubandhu. Um, 18, 18 
Datu's categorization. The purpose of the 18 Datu categorization is really to counter, and this is the difficult one now, to counter uh, Yeah, to counteract, you know, this notion that we usually have, and that is um, that everything we experience basically is uh, either um, rupa or kalpana, right? How do you translate kalpana in English? Hmm? Imagination. Is that Hindi word, Kalpana? Hindi? This one. Such a beautiful language. Kalpana. It sounds right, coming straight from a Bollywood film, Kalpana. <laughs> Kalpana. Imagination. So, there's this idea that uh, we have, our, all our experience either come from a a form, rupa, or uh, imagination or mind, I guess. So, okay, now this is a very very Vabhyashika or <clears throat> Sautrantika in a way, um, they like to say that uh, they like, you know, the aim for their theory, like, like in this Abhidharma, is uh, to understand the difference between the, the projection that we have based on the five senses and um, the projection that, we, um, that uh, arises in the mind. Basically breaking it down. Okay? I'm talking really specifically from the Abhidharma point of view. Uh, if we are approaching this more from Chitamata or the Madhyamiko, Madhyamikan, then it will be a little bit different. Okay. Um, I need to also tell you this. I think we need to, between you and me, at least we need to mention that we no need to agree, we don't need to come to an agreement, but we need to mention that there is a, um, there's always a, what do you call it, a dis, um, discrep yeah, sort of blurry, distorted, sort of distorted, um, idea when the word existence is used. How do you say existence in Sanskrit or Pali? Exist, exist. Hmm? Astikva. And in Hindi? Oh. Okay. What does it mean? I know you will exist, but can you, can you explain this a little bit? What do you mean by it? And I'm going to ask this to also Chinese. What is Chinese word exist? Hmm? Chun Tsa? Chun Tsa. Chun Tsai. What does that mean? I want you to think about it. And what does English mean? Exist. What does it mean? Mm, 
I think there are a lot of good European uh, thinkers. I forgot these names now. Uh, there's um, Wolfgang, you know, the Austrian guy who's really linguistic, Wittgenstein, right? Wittgenstein. And um, yeah, I think they, they're really good, very, very good, I think. But um, anyway, I think this is at least I need to mention this. So exists. When the moment when I say the word exists, I don't know what you are thinking. Most probably, both you and me have just a vague idea, and we just use it. Um, exists. So I don't know what kind of idea you have in my in your head, but if you if you sort of concentrate, then um, well, I'm now borrowing it more from the pramana. Buddhist, uh, what do you call it? Another different kind of study called Buddhist logic, Brahmana. Yeah. Uh, if you want to know this, then you, you need to study Brahmana. And uh, please don't ask me to teach Brahmana. I'm really bad with this. I, I'm really not so good with this one. Anyway, they, they really study this a lot. So what do we mean by exist? Such as um, Demper Duba. Demper Duba means truly existent. Truly. But then there's a problem because what do we mean by truly? And uh, this has, these are very well thought through by the Indian scholars, uh, you know, Buddhist scholars in the past. What do we mean by truly? Truly is Rajindani, Jemin Dani, Jemin, unfabricated, unaltered, unaltered, and Jena Teba independent. That's how you define truly. And then exists, truly exists. So there's that. And then also, what is it? Tseme um, is logically exists. Yeah, logically exists, right? Logically exists, it's logically exists. Nothing to do with a truly, it's just logical, truly, <laughs> logically exists. And then there's a something called a zedup, substantially exists, zedupa. Now, the Abhidharma people uh, tend to talk a lot about substantially exists. Substantially, zesudrupa. Does not necessarily mean, although there's a lot of argument, does not necessarily mean that they are asserting that it truly exists. It just substantially exists. Doesn't mean that it truly exists. Okay? This. These are kind of a very interrelated, okay? Today, many times, many times, if you read like a mainstream media, for instance, most of the time what they do is they sell you the, first, uh, the third one, logically existent. But the logic, you can always make, or make, right? Logic is the most easy to construct, actually. You think logic, even though we love logic, but logic is, it's like a Lego. Lego? You can just put it together. It's very easy. I can cook up some logic. If I have time, I can just need a little bit of marketing, actually. That's all there is. So, today, many times, we sell the logically existing thing, which will convince a lot of people, and then you have already 
assume that whatever logically, whatever is being established by logically existent is substantially existent, you are still safe, you are still safe. But the worst is when you think it's truly existent. I need to tell you this because this is also related to the study of Datu. Getting really tense. Um, <clears throat> okay, how is it related to, related to Datu? Oh. Hmm. Datu? Okay, so let's go through the... Um, no need all the 18, there's just simply no time, but the first three set. Okay, there is a, okay, so there's a um, Indriya Datu, which is um, faculty, uh, sort of, sense, yeah, faculty Datu, and then Vishya Datu, right? Vishya Datu, Vishya Datu, which is uh, object Datu, and then consciousness Datu, which is uh, Vijana Datu, yeah, Vij, yeah, Vij. Nana Datu. Okay, so let's talk only at the only the eyes. So I Datu, this I, then object Datu, the colonial building, the gold paint, the chandelier, mm, and the consciousness. So important that one. And this is white. And the, all the history behind, you know, all the disc judgment and so I my eyes look at this wall and then have the notion, this is wall. So these three together then cement, solidify the existence of self. Well, I have to be here. I, I can see my, you know, I can take photos. I can have a selfie with this wall. You know, all of that. It, re it, it really is a cementing the notion of the self. When you are actually using the material that are all falling apart all the time. Remember? They are all passenger. All you are doing is picking up all the transitory stuff. Traveling, passengers, moving, floating, decaying, drifting. You put it all together and then solidifies things exist. <clears throat> so basically, yeah. Um, eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind. Now, no, che, lu, yi. Six of that, and the six object, and the uh, six consciousness, which is a byproduct of meeting of this. Oh. Then there's the whole study about what do we mean by meet? I meet wall produces the consciousness, right? What do we mean by meet? Uh, please, you know, I don't I want to skip this one, definitely I want to skip. I cannot, this one is too much, too much. But those uh, who are studying psychotherapy, psychology, this meet, important to study, I think. 
because um, oh, so many reasons, so many, many reasons. Because if you don't know this, let's say you are very depressed, and then your therapist call you in his office or her office, and then you lie down, right? On a couch or something. And anyway, I have a very, very midi kindergarten level of understanding this. So anyway, I'm, I was told that you lie down and then you talk. And then usually, Mr. Freud comes to a conclusion that was something to do with the childhood trauma or something like this, right? Which is good, good, good. I'm not denouncing this. This is good. But you see, lack of understanding, lack of understanding the phenomena of meat, the meeting, meat, meeting, eating, has deprived Mr. Freud. He can only go up to the childhood. Actually, wow, it's like, if this is the cause of the trauma, and this is the trauma, the childhood parenting, blah, 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 is only from here to here. That's it. All this you need to study, right? Now, please don't get discouraged by the, oh, it's just impossible. This is so long. No, no, no. Actually, it's not. To really handle it, how to handle it, so easy. Breathe in. <laughs> no, no, it's true. Breathe in. Breathe out. Do not judge. Just be here. That handles everything instantly, all this. This is the beauty of the Abhidharma or any of the Dharma study. But, you know, since we want to decipher it, since we need to really, you know, study this from all angles, that's why this categorization is important. I mean, of course, like I said, you know, my father would come and say, hey, you know, you are wasting time. Because he's coming from this, you know, person who's like into practice. And he's assuming, like him, I have this like unwavering devotion to the path. I think he has. I think he has. Because he's like, but me, no. My devotion is very flaky. It's like this, like that. I need to tell you this. He lived in Sikkim for a long time. <clears throat> he recently passed away. One of the greatest masters. He had an intestine cancer or something a long time ago. And all his disciples, you know, doctors said, you really need to treat this. And he refused. He said, oh, I'm going to take care of this myself. It was really serious. So he chanted mantra to cure the, his problem, a really big problem. And after six months, the doctor found no traces. And at that time, the Dr. told his disciples, yeah, because for me, this is exactly what he said, from a childhood onwards, I am blessed. I'm blessed with this merit. This is exactly what he said. I always had this merit of believing in the mantra. What a beautiful, beautiful way of putting. You guys don't have this. So you guys will partially chant, but it's not going to work. But me, from a childhood, I have this merit that this will do it. You know, so, you know, but this, this, this works very well with the, our conversation about the Datu this morning. If you know a little bit about how 
faculty datu, object datu, and consciousness datu, they function. World is like what the Arhat say, long till the Juru Rejapota, but I'm sure there's a beautiful Bali phrase. We call it long till the Juru Rejapota, but I actually <coughs> still don't know what it means, but something, Jurura is, oh, Jurura, that fruit, Haula, is it? Jurura, it's a fruit. I'm sure you will, you, long till the Juru Rejapota, meaning, you know, if you know this, life is like putting this fruit. Hola, what is it in English? Gooseberry, yes. This is an expression from the many of the Sharvakayana Sutras. So that if you understand this ayatanas, skandhas, and about, um, datus, you, then you will look at the life, like how you look at the gooseberry in your palm. Please don't ask me, what does it mean? I, have, I can only guess. I can only guess. I think it means the whole picture. And some says the gooseberry is transparent. Is that true? Sort of transparent? Translucent, okay. So maybe that also. And some say, oh, we know, because the moment you see, you will have a saliva. So you know the taste and the sound, everything, I guess. So that's how it would be. These are, the, these are from the sutras, by the way. But there's one expression, they, they say, namkhatan lantil nyampata, namkhatan lantil a That's a good one. He said, but if you understand these, these subjects, then you, then you will look at the life. You will look at your life <clears throat> the size of the sky and the size of your palm, no difference. You, if you look at this, uh, means like a dust, handful of a dust and a handful, handful of a gold, no difference. So on and so forth. There's a lot of that. By the way, it comes in the section of supposedly encouraging disciples. You, you can tell, you can tell these are the expression 2,000 years ago, you know. Today it won't work, I guess. Hey, you know, come, I will teach you something that will make you realize your life is, you, when you look at your life, you, it's like looking at a gooseberry in your palm. It won't really work, right? But actually, actually, Leadership training A to Z is this. Management of your life A to Z is this. Because you are managing the datus. <clears throat> okay. We talked about the existence. Another one. Uh, this is a complicated one. And this is, I, I, I was a little bit stuck with this, and I don't know how to share this properly, but it's kind of important. So for those who are serious, please study more about this. But anyway, world of information. What is the word information in Sanskrit or Hindi? What is it in Chinese? Information, information. Hmm? Jankari. In Hindi? Information. This is a really, really important. You are a slave of information. Information is important. And the reason why this is important here is because the datus are the processor of information. Processor, translator, processor, editor, 
director, producer, makeup artist, and I'm talking like a filmmaker now, you understand? Datus. So, information. How much do you want? You know, you have a lot of information in your head. And you are filled with the information. Are you sure you still want to occupy, uh, to give space for other people's information? With a uh, sugar-coated words like education. You understand? It's like education, advancement, you know, stuff like this. Uh, information. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know how to talk, Sheja, you know, Jan, Sheja, the subject sort of curriculum. What is the word curriculum in uh, Hindi? Curriculum. Hmm? Patyakam. What does it mean? Something to study. Basically what I'm saying is, are you sh uh, basically what the Abhidharma really want to tell you is, are you sure you want someone to cu curate, cu curate information for you. Are you sure? Museum curator, you know? Like a film festival curating films, what to watch. You are surrendering. Are you sure you want to surrender somebody to curate what you will See, they will, you know, they will, they're very good, you know, they will say, oh, you have a choice. But they've already chosen already. <laughs> they've already printed the menu, okay, this is, this, this, oh, wow, this is so much choice. No, you have no choice. Is that what you want to do? This is what the Abhidharma is getting at, actually. But of course, they need to talk from the bottom, right? So the information processor is basically study of Datu. <clears throat> mm. Okay, so, yeah, of course, like an eye faculty is the capa has the ability to process the information of the visual, visual, visual information, um, sound information, smell information, so on and so forth. Okay, let's, since we are talking this, so how, why? I'm, I'm coming back to Tantra because remember I was telling you that um, my teachers encouraged me to study my, uh, Abhidharma, always telling me that in, if you want to study Tantra, it's good. So, I don't know whether you have ever heard, the, I mean, some of you already did, but some of you may not. There's a something called five Buddha family. Family, in this case, we are talking about Datu, actually. Five Buddha Datu. I guess. Um, so, I don't know, how to explain this? Let's say you are a min mineralogist, is it? People who, who know about mineral. And, uh, I don't know, you want to create a I don't know, some medicine or something, 
and you, you need a specific medicine and you are really good at mineral, and then you go around looking at the mineral. Oh, that mineral is good for cold. This mineral is good for whatever, you understand? Because you see the, you see the potential. I, I hate to use this word, potential. You see the datu, datu of that, what it can do. In fact, for the Tantra, it's much more. Mm. So, but basically, what I'm saying is like, you, you look, you see a chick, like chicken, um, chicken babies, chick, and you can't really look at a chick and say, oh, I can, you know, they're here, you know, in the future if I need a cat. Cat, if I want a pet cat. You can't look at the chicks and think, oh, here it is. You can't, right? Of course not. Like this. So the tant tantric um, headhunter will go and say, okay, ah, oh, this man has a lot of, I don't know, jealousy. Ah. Oh. Okay, so th this man has a lot of jealousy, this man has a lot of desire, this woman has a lot of anger. Hmm. One with a lot of anger. Uh, one with a lot of anger is Amitabha. Amitabha Buddha. You know? One with a lot of... Um, uh, no, one with a lot of desire is the Amitabha Buddha. One with a lot of anger is the Akshobhya, so on and so forth. So you see, you see the type. You see, you know the chicks example I just gave you? Ah, this is chicks. This will become chicken, right? Like that. So the tantric headhunter, so to speak, you will see it that way. Nothing gets wasted, by the way. Nothing. Everything is usable. And to this process, yeah, the, that study requires the study of datus. Datus. It helps, I guess. But nowadays it's just a theory. Nowadays, not many people have time like that. Nowadays, a lot of people just grab a chicks and put it in the bag, hoping that they have a golden retriever. <laughs> and then after three weeks, your chicks bark. And they say, oh, something is going wrong. You understand? So, <laughs> it doesn't... Anyway, uh, just a very, very um, kind of information. Yeah, they, they, yeah, I talked about information. Oh, information is very powerful. I cannot, I don't know how to just, uh, information is a powerful, information is, dictates you. I think all you need to remember is this. How sure are you to let someone curate, curate, right, information for you? How someone, how much should you, should you give the other power to print your menu, basically? You don't want? What do you do? Breathe in, out, and just watch that. Every time you do that, <coughs> curators are getting, they lose their job. Cur curators, 
art experts, you know, they, they lose their job. And that's what you want. Okay, <clears throat> I will, we talked about the eyes a little bit, but I will talk a little bit about the mental, you know, the sixth one, because that's a little bit interesting. I mean, interesting is not the right word. That's kind of, what do you call it? It's, it's, it's a bit of a problem, and well, it's, an, it's, a, it's another world. Yeah, important. It's, it's um, mental object dharma, uh, mental object dhatu. So, okay, me, I use my eye, look at the chandelier. Ah, chandelier. That's easy, you know, sort of. I, dhatu, uh, object, the chandelier dhatu, and the consciousness. But mind, you know, the, hmm, mind faculty, mental object, not physical object, not sound, mental object, and uh, mind consciousness, I guess. Mind consciousness. That is its own, um, it has its, yeah, it's, it's uh, quite, um, quite a subject, this one. So in this subject, we study about things like memory. Oh, gosh. Shall we go in there like memory? It's a what is that? What what do we mean by memory? Um, Actually, um, there are scholars who says at the end there's only dharma dhatu, mental objects. The, all the others are like basically come from it, you know, you know, dharma dhatu, so the dharma, dharma in this meaning phenomena, so like a, you can have a memory, you can, your mind can look at a mental object, such as what you ate yesterday, and then have the consciousness about it. And this, is a big part of so-called life. Of course, now imagine, <clears throat> all datus are functioning, right, for most of, the, most of us. Especially uh, the other subject, which is Zukham, Zumekham. So, Kama Datu, Rupa Datu, and Arupa Datu. And we, are, we belong to the Kama Datu realm. realm. In this case, the Datu means realm. I, I think I've already told you. <clears throat> but 
In today's world, I think all we are concerned is the Kamadhatu, what we see. But is what is in front, what is observable, is all we care, right? But in the Abhidharma, the whole study of Zukam and Zumejikam, Arupa Dhatu and Arupa Dhatu. For in the, within, this, within this realm of the Rupa, I mean Kama Dhatu, the whole 18 Dhatus that we have been discussing this morning, they function. For most. And when this 18 thing functions, now you can see. It's like this. Um, in the 1940s, you can watch silent movies. And that's already quite powerful. When um, Charlie Chaplin eats shoe strings, it's already like it brings a lot of sadness and it brings a lot of, I don't know, laughter and all of that. And then sometimes if you go to a more exclusive cinema in London, somebody plays piano. Do you have that in England? I mean, India, still? Sometimes? Yeah, India would have something like this. You, you know, and then that helps. Dhatu, it helps. Now, sound, editing, and then actually there are cinema. I actually went once in Japan. There's one that where you can actually smell and also have like when there's a rain in the cinema, there's a little bit of a diesel like that. So what it, what it, what it does is it actually makes the illusion real. I'm giving you an example of how the, this movie functions. So when all these 18 datus function in one go, there is a no chance to think that Atman doesn't exist. There's, there's just no chance. Of course, I'm here. I can feel it. I can drink. What chance is there? So people like Vasubandhu is like, minority, what are you talking about? You, you know, you know, you know it's like a bunch of people who are born in a cinema, like that kind of cinema. The only thing they know about is that cinema. And then someone telling me, hey, you know, You know, <clears throat> so telling somebody telling you, you know, there's a there's another world out there. Just wouldn't hear of it. And then one gets so passionate about these things. You know. And it works. And some of them ridiculously works. Like RRR. <laughs> the movie, did you watch? Oh, it's so good. As a film student myself, I consider it as a film student, that is just a, such an incredibly crafted so good because it's just so ridiculous <laughs> and there are things that happens that is ridiculous it's never going to happen like this people don't freeze in the middle of the sky arrows don't sort of come very fast and then suddenly slow you know <laughs> And anyway, those tigers, they look so badly done. <laughs> the tigers, the jumping. Basically, it's almost like just a still photograph being moved. <laughs> but doesn't matter. I watched that RR twice. 
And then there's a whole background thing like the British and the colonial and then the patriotism. And then of course, I'm sure for a lot of people, when this seemingly Lord Ram-like, <laughs> Lord Ram-like image appears suddenly from the forest, it must. I regret that I didn't watch this in a Indian cinema. I'm, if it is showing, I would go, actually. I can just feel how they would like jump and, th you know, like, I don't know, they, right? I'm telling you, this is, so when the, these datus, they function properly, it just solidifies the at Atman, the clinging to the self, and then it injects each other, and then it doesn't matter. Things, some of the things are just so ridiculous. Like spending all these millions just to shoot a balloon, for instance. <laughs> but it, it really motivates you, yes, take that! <laughs> you know? You guys deserve this. <laughs> you understand? It really... The moment you wake up in the morning, you, and you want to immediately read what happened to that balloon. <laughs> so, purpose of studying, I'm trying to tell you the purpose of studying the datus. <laughs> okay. Um, now, we have to sort of, in the Tibetan, we say gallop through, meaning just quickly go through the rest of the... Uh, Abhidharma uh, contents. Of course, the Ayatana that's a big one. Again, more than ever, now, Ayatana study, important. And the reason is, the Ayatana, 12 Ayatana, are the I don't know how to say, hmm, in the... Because media Really, Ayatana has so much to do with the media. What is media? I mean, in a really, really uh, strict sense, what media. How do you say media in Hindi or Sanskrit? Martyam. What does that mean again? Medium. medium. Yes, medium is good. That's where the Ayatana comes in. Um, maybe, <clears throat> what happened to that? 
Sense um, <coughs> because the ayatanas are also a bit like a translator, like a gate, like a, also it acts as a power, um, also it gate. Che, che, che. It um, gives birth to the, gives birth to, and then it also what enhances or multiplies, and it it uh, also acts as the, uh, yeah, multiplier. I guess it makes it. It's it's the sort of one of the most important part of the engine of the samsara, if you like. Something that moves the, the samsaric. Actually, yeah, many um, times you will see, uh, you will hear, you will read um, um, in the Buddhist texts, uh, talking about the samsara as a jumi tunkhor. Uh, the machine of the illusion. And Ayatana is a central, one of the central sort of the mover, the engine. Um, but I think um, I should really go through at least um, Otherwise, at least I want to tell you some of the contents of the Abhidharma. Um, okay, so the Datus, there's a study of Ayatana, and then study on Karma. Um, Wow, different types of karma, um, such as penjeji le dang, zogjeji le, you know, like, put it very, very crudely. Uh, karma, um, what certain um, mm, and also yes also how do we define what is uh, non virtuous or non uh, bad karma so called bad karma so called good karma how do we decide what is bad and what is good um Again, just keep in mind, broadly, any kind of a thought and action, if that thought and action, together with all the datus and the skandhas and the, you know, or, or they all work together, if that thought and action distance you from the truth, basically, from the uh, Vasu Bandhu's point of view, it's, I really don't want to use the word bad. Migewa, kusala, akusala. It's a, I, how do you translate that in English now? Kusala, gewa and migewa. This word, English word bad and good is very limiting. Skillful. Skillful? 
and unskillful. That's good. Gewa in Tibetan is auspicious, something like Gewa, auspicious, wholesome. So unwholesome action and wholesome action. Unauspicious, inauspicious action and auspicious action, if you like. So it boils down to any kind of an action because the most auspicious thing that can happen, as the Buddha said, what is it? Um, His, uh, there are only three most auspicious things, and that is that basically talking about the truth. Things like um, all compounded things are impermanent, and knowing that, not just intellectually really wholeheartedly that is auspicious why because it's non-deceiving you are going to die might as well accept you will not be disappointed you are not going to suddenly sort of realize oh i will not die it's not going to happen <laughs> If you accept that, yeah, one of these days I'm going to die, that fact is not going to fail you. You know? So that one you can surrender. That is auspiciousness. You know, so that kind of auspiciousness we are talking, okay? We are not talking about auspicious in the sense of marigold garland and, you know, Diaz and I don't know, white elephant emerging or none of that or a Tibetan white scarf. Those those are good, but we are not talking about that. We are talking about the truth. So that's one. The second auspiciousness is uh, the being who taught has arrived and yeah, Buddha basically. And then the third auspiciousness is the auspiciousness of the Sangha, that there is a still a community that buys that truth, so to speak. Why did we add to this part? What was? Oh yeah, karma. We were talking about karma. So what is inauspicious karma? What is auspicious karma? Anything that takes you away from the this truth. This is why many serious Dharma practitioners will look at the today's vipassana and mindfulness practice. Is it auspicious? Because many of these mindfulness practices are done sugarcoating the fact that you are going to die. Because they all want to relax. You should not relax. <laughs> you should be like in panicky situation all the time. Oh my God, I'm going to die tomorrow. <laughs> you should be really constipated all the time. Like, oh gosh, things are going to fall apart. Yes, I'm in love right now, but who knows what's next? So on and so forth. You know, Sarava, remember we were talking about? <laughs> So anything that distances you from the, basically the truth, it's in auspicious act and thought. But, there are, but this is just a general, but then more specifically, we just give you an example. Some karma can penge, is like some karma can push you and the other karma can ripen you. Ripen. Um, good example, maybe. Um, okay, purely Buddhist, okay, from the Buddhist approach, I'm coming. So, you may reborn as a dog because of an 
inauspicious thoughts and the action of the past life. Okay, now I know, I know, I know animal rights people don't jump into a quick conclusion that, oh, you know, how can you say dog's life is bad? We are not talking like that. We are talking about a dog probably has a lesser chance to understand all compounded things that are impermanent. That's the only reason. They all they think about is probably food. So, you know, in, you know, like impermanence, shunyata, they don't think about these things. So that's why. So, your previous life's karma may be a previous life or pre previous moment, okay, is an inauspicious karma that made you dog. But you are ripe, you are auspicious karma, okay, very, very. This auspicious is, by the way, uh, sarava auspicious, leaking, yeah, sasarva, sasarva, right. So you become dog, but you become pet dog of Bill Gate. Nice place to stay, nice place to eat. You understand? Much, much more than hundreds of, I don't know, people who are suffering in the war, whatever. So, in that detail, study of karma, just giving you, uh, what do you call it, going through the list now, based on Abhidharma Kosha. Um, and in connection with that, we talk about the container world. So this is where we talk about the Mount Meru, so on and so forth. This we know, yeah, we can. And um, yeah, and then also there's a study on motivation. Uh, st you know, good motivation, you know, all of that kind of thing. Um, okay, so now there's a one chapter called Traje Temba, chapter of Traje. Traje is basically, Tra means very, very, very small and thin and almost invisible, but at the same time, you know, like eh, all the Buddhist words, J means big and, you know, like multiplying. Basically, we are talking about defilement, kleshas. So this is uh, the fifth chapter usually in the Dharmakosha. It's a really big study on uh, defilement, kleshas. Um, And then, the study of, because now that there is something called defilement, only because of that actually, then we talk about path. It's interesting, isn't it? If there's no defilement, there's no need of path. No usage. So because there is a defilement, there is a path. And then there, there is a, so much detailed study on things like 12 interdependent co-origination, which is just briefly, um, it's like, um, okay, so it's like, um, I'm looking at this plate now, okay? And I look at this strawberry, okay? That is, um, what is it? Okay, the first ignorance in the 12 interdependent mm, avid, avidya, okay? Strawberry. 
And I see it as in unit, one unit. And I see it as, a, yeah, almost like a permanent. It's the same, same strawberry that I saw it earlier, or so on and so forth. And in, independent, substantially existing, all of that. Okay, so that is avidya, ignorance. And then, of course, the strawberry. And then strawberry that's organic, so on and so forth. All of that comes into this. <laughs> and then, no, 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 the, you know, in that, and out of that comes Ming Dang Zuk, strawberry, Ming Zuk, Rupa, Nama. And I crave, I need to eat this. See, I'm talking about the 12 interdependent coordination. Already it's happening. Within, within the act of looking at the strawberry and putting it in my mouth, or there's all the 12 interdependent coordination. Lenpa, taking, all the way to the, not only the death of the strawberry, such as this, which, by the way, is the birth of something else. I don't know what it is, a chewed strawberry? Now you know, the going round and round of samsara. <laughs> so, 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 how should I put it now? Yeah. Mm. And then attachment to the strawberry, that is good, is healthy. And then, of course, along with it comes all the sorts of contradiction, too much strawberry is not good for these intestines, and all of that. Just never perfect, basically. I've been eating fruits quite a lot in the past, like six, seven years, because they say, oh, fruit is good for you. Now I've been, now they're telling me there's a lot of sugar, and this is really bad for, <laughs> bad for diabetic and all of that. Now they are telling me to just eat vegetable, steamed vegetable. Anyway, at the age of 61, I think maybe it's good to just eat tiramisu and all of that. <laughs> <laughs> you, you understand? Who knows? There will be no tiramisu tomorrow. <laughs> But anyway, uh, 12 interdependent coordination, it actually exists within one, well, it can be explained within the three lives, one life, and it can be also explained within one interaction with the object and experience with this object. Okay, really galloping through now. Um, and, and then, he, this is where we discuss about the Lamji Demba, the truth of the path of the cessation of suffering and the, co and the cause of the suffering. So, there we learn about how to go about it. We talk about things like Tendel Luk Jung and Luk Do, which means um, should we go unlock? Yes. So, okay, so it's like this um, mm, like a will. Actually, there is a will painted in the Buddhist temples. So there's a will, right? So, okay, stop. I look at this. So I should explain this properly. I look at the whole independent something, labeled it as a strawberry, avidya, and then craving, I mean, that they uh, uh, is referring this as a strawberry action, karmic formation, and then labeling, labeling, yes, craving, all of these are spokes of the machine. You know, like the, what do you call it, like a bolt, yeah, spokes. Now, can you imagine 
So this is what the Vipassana people are saying. If you can dent one of those spoke, then machine gets slower at least. Just dent one. Or take out one part of the machine. The machine either totally stops, which is of course the best thing, but at least let it go slowly. So that, how to do it? This way or that way? I think I said better, you know. So there's a two way of doing it. One is going from the beginning to the end, or one is actually retracing to the cause. So this, so there's a whole of that. And then because of that, Lapasum. Tri Shiksha, Tri Shiksha. Education now. How to educate yourself through discipline, through samadhi, and through prajana. And then Abhasu Bandhu spends a lot of time explaining, especially the one of the shiksha, one of the training, which is the samadhi, the, the meditation. And from then, from that came all the teachings on vipassana and the shamatha. Okay? Now, the result. And this one I'm definitely going to skip because this is, even when I was studying Abhidharma in my, you know, study days, I do remember like pulling my hair and Namja. It's really, really difficult. And the reason is this. The reason is easy. Why is it difficult? It's a bit like this. I can tell you what happens if your two eyes are on your toes. How are you going to look at the world? You understand? It's not happening to you physically, but you can only imagine, right? Okay, so it's all going to be like a low angle shots. I will be looking at people's feet more than the people's head, so on and so forth. You can imagine. It's a bit like that. So when we talk about Niroda, Nirvana, the result, we are talking about what happens when you have dented some of these machines. Like some of this machine of the samsara. When you don't have some of this, what happens to you? And yeah, I'm sorry, because it's kind of difficult and also I'm a bit lazy here, and I feel that I don't think I can communicate with you properly this time, not really properly arranged. I'm, mm, because if I can do it properly, if I can present to you properly, then it should really make you want that result, you know? This is like, I, I, yeah, I will go and do a little bit of a marketing studies. Okay, what will you gain when you are missing with some of this machine? Then I will try to sort of, yeah, I should learn to articulate this properly. It's difficult, it's really, really difficult. Because you just cannot imagine I mean, in the shamatha, we do talk about something like Xinjiang, perfection of training, Xinjiang. You know, like, we talk about things like, like, you do shamatha again and again and again consistently, then something that, okay, so let's say 
usually you need six pieces of chapati to fill your stomach. As you keep on doing the shamatha, even a half the chapati will do it for the whole day. The day is a reason because most of the hunger, craving, all this is because they, you know, you are ayatanas, you are datus, and you are skandhas, dictated by your atman, you know, you are self-clinging, is making you unnecessarily eat five and half chapatis. Not necessary. And also, yeah, like that. So even a five minute nap will make you so energetic and all of this. No need like seven hours of sleep. So this is only the result of managing to make the body and the mind balance so well. But that's not the result the Buddhists are even aspiring for. That half chapati is a bad news. We don't want to even eat chapati at all. We don't want to have the delusion of thinking that there is a chapati. So see, so it's a little difficult, this one. I think at this point, I will ask you to ask, just raise some questions. Maybe I can, if you have some confusion or a doubt, I can answer, try, try to answer. Mm. Yeah, and then for, for immeasurable thoughts, eight, for noble path, all of these are part of the Abhidharma studies, okay? Um, yeah, and then the four stages of the Samadhi. Four stages of the Samadhi. So basically, we have only sort of glimpse of glimpse of some of the very sort of raw part of the Abhidharma we discuss, such as the skandhas, but finer, finer aspects of the Abhidharma, like the character of the samadhi, what do we mean by samadhi? What constitute thing is in samadhi, thing is in focus, right? Focus. Samadhi, how do you translate samadhi in concentration? Focus. Focus. Abs you know, focus. What constitutes focus? What do we mean by concentrate? Non distracted. Have you thought about this, for instance, when the meditation instructor says, okay, don't get distracted, just concentrate on your breathing. Do you know what they are saying? They are saying, don't concentrate on this. Con no, don't get distracted on this, distracted on the breathing. That's what they are saying. Isn't it? So breathing is a distraction. But for now, we don't want to say like that to the beginner student because they will get so confused. We like to tell them, oh, you know, breathing is important. Breathing is all you have. Just keep on concentrating on the breathing. But if you want to really, really dig in, breathing is a, looking at, a, you know, remaining in the breathing is a distraction. You want to get, uh, transcend that. So these are the studies that you will find in the later chapter in the Abhidharma Kosha. What makes a pure perfection of the Samadhi? So once you have that, then the result is Dra Jom. Oh, I need to explain this. Dra 
means four enemy, four arhat. Chum means destroy. And in this case, we are not talking about some external enemy or external foe. We are talking about anything, anything that has something to do with the skandhas, clinging to the skandhas, dhatus, ayatanas. That is the foe, enemy. The enemy. When that is destroyed. And not only that, Lama me panyangna, pari nirvana, you know, like, Lama gita chamba. When there's nothing left of these um, elements, you are free. It doesn't mean that you become a sky. <clears throat> okay, please ask questions. Uh, Rinpoche, uh, thank you very much for this explanation. I have a question that connects what you said on the first day when you were explaining about uh, about the skandhas and when you described about this person who is sleeping and who is dreaming that um, you know he may have taken poison and so on. And then there was um, you know you referred to uh, you know that some people think that maybe you know there is someone who is peacefully sleeping over there even while the person is dreaming and so on. And uh, today, um, you know, this explanation about the ayatanas and the dhatus was very interesting for me because of a uh, couple of, you know, very um, personal, um, it's a slightly risky question that I'm asking actually. Um, but um, um, I, I survived the World Trade Center attack uh, very narrowly in 2001. Oh. And um, as a consequence of that, I'll just, you know, I don't want to go into the details, but as a consequence of that, I developed what in the psychological literature is called as post-traumatic PTSD. And then um, because of, uh, there was a genetics of bipolar disorder in the family. And I had an episode a few years later of uh, bipolar psychosis or uh, complete delusion. And I, um, you know, I was on, um, uh, it was quite scary for people. So I ended up uh, being on the streets for several weeks and um, and then very recently during covid i went through a complete loss of vision on account of covid and uh, and the vision was recovered because of good neuro you know neurologists and uh, eye surgeons and so on so these were you know fairly dramatic experiences uh, which had a lot of uh, consequences on relationships family especially the bipolar psychosis you know created a lot of stigmas and so on and so forth and recovery, um, you know, did not mean that those problems went away. But again, I don't want to get into the social dynamics of mental health. But what you said about, you know, these dhatus is very uh, interesting because uh, um, it's, it's, it's almost like, you know, this, uh, you know, when this problem happens and you recover from it and you realize that there was a problem and there is something, uh, you know, where the, of the memory, like what you said about the sixth mind level, you know, where there's a lot of uh, memory which is getting stored, where you feel that, okay, there's some peaceful witness which was seeing all this, you know, chaos and, uh, you know, confusion happening. And then you feel that, okay, you know, there's nothing substantial and, and, and it's like, uh, you know, uh, your ego becomes like a bangle which is broken and the pieces are inside a kaleidoscope and you're, you think that you're seeing some real images where they are actually, you know, just fantastic, you know, just creations of your mind and, you know, you are, you are curating and you're creating a mess for yourself, that curation. So, so in that sense, what you explained today, connecting that is very interesting. So my question is, this memory which tells you that you experienced something and, you know, uh, you've, uh, which tells you that you have recovered, which helps you to analyze the chaos, is this memory also completely an illusion? Is, it, is, it, is there nothing substantial to this memory? And this question I'm asking because in Hinduism or in the Bhagavad Gita and so on, you know, Krishna says, you know, there is something substantial and the word samadhi is about... Uh, being steady or being settled rather than focus and when you are steady and you are settled then there is this you know witness which is always there whether from the age of three when your memory kicks in through all the troubles and you can go through mental illness and you can go through all sorts of mess and still the memory is very clear sorry for this very long question but I'm you know I'm trying to um, you know sort of express um, you know from where I was um, looking at uh, what you're explaining and trying to relate it to the mental health struggles or the mental function struggles. Yeah, thank you. Mm. Uh, 
I, I don't know whether I would be able to trans better answer this, but just pure from the academic Buddhist study, uh, there are schools, ancient uh, Buddhist schools. They believe in time as a substantially existing. But a lot of the Buddhist schools don't. That time is a totally an imaginary thing. It's a relative. So, um, but you know, this is a this is a difficult. You know, for instance, if you um, if you order five cup of coffee in the dream, the five is still five in the dream, even though in reality it doesn't exist. You understand quantity, quality, time, all of this is like that. Um, and also the dream also has past, present and the future. By the time you are ordering the coffee, while he, this person is making and then you getting it, time has passed. So later Buddhists or majority of the Buddhists would say it's a bit like this, so-called the memory, so-called the, what do you call it, uh, memory is uh, non-substantial, all, all in the illusory, imaginary level. Okay, so this is why it's a good news because you can, you can actually work on it because it's an illusory and if you must, it only exists now. This is why it's workable. If it does exist substantially and if it does even worse, if it exists truly, then, then it's impossible to work with. Because it really happened, right? So then you are stuck. That's it. Okay. Yes, please. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, Rambachala. So uh, talking about the three supreme methods uh, that are that is used mostly. So the first and the third are relatively, you know, like tangible because we can at least pretend to, you know, like first generate bodhicitta and then dedicate the merit, right? But how do we actually do the second one? Because that is like when you actually do the action mm. without any conceptualization. Yes. So. I think uh, mm, the lady is talking about uh, the Mahayana method, right? The Mahayana so, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> these three supreme methods are basically you begin the whatever you do with the mind of the bodhicitta, meaning that you are doing this for the benefit of, I mean, for the awakening of all sentient beings, that's being one. Now, number three is you, what, after you do whatever you have done, you dedicate this merit to the all the sentient beings. The third one, two is to really <clears throat> uh, see the true nature of your deed or your action, which is the shunyata, and that's what you're talking about. So for the beginners, the only way you can train your mind by doing this is by telling yourself this is an illusion, this is like a dream, this is, <clears throat> yeah, this is a dream, this is an illusion, this is, I, I think this is really happening, but what is real, this is, yeah, just habituating, that's why it's called law jong, law jong, law mind jong is like habituate, basically, habituate, train, that's the only way. But after a while, this information really gets into your head. And then like, you will be doing all these uh, virtuous actions as if you are playing with your, let's say you are a mother and you have a child 
and the child is building a sand castle and you are participating the game. You don't want, you will not outright contradict the baby, you know, it's pointless. Okay. Okay. Uh, Rinpoche, uh, how do we pass on this wisdom to our children or grandchildren who are growing in a very different kind of environment, the school and the media, which you have already dwelt upon, and also in light of uh, Buddhism losing out to intellectuals on one side, losing out to converts. If I were to say Korea, where some years back, it was a very different demographic. Today it is 23% Buddhism and uh, Christianity is 26 or and the rest are not decide, no religion. Now this being the trend, how do we get our grandchildren, in my case especially, uh, into the wisdom of the Adhidharma? I think there are a few other things we can do. Of course, the best is always really aspiration, but people like me, supposedly, who, is, who has the responsibility, we need to do a much better job. We are not doing a good job. And um, by which I mean, we need to really learn marketing. Not to sell Buddhism, but to really display what is available. And that could involve some skillful means. For instance, I'm glad that you brought up the Korea. I really think that Buddhists should come up with a good idea of a wedding. See, this is what happens with things like Nyaya, Purva Mimasa, Mm, uh, Buddha Dharma, Jhana, Jhan. There's no marriage ceremony, none of this. It's all about impermanence, blah, blah, blah. So then, I think we should come up with some really good wedding ceremony. I really, I actually know somebody who said, oh, I became Christians because they have such a good wedding. So I think these, I'm probably, I, you know, it sounds like a joke, but really this kind of ritual, ritual, but the danger with the ritual is it becomes a dogma and it, be, and it becomes a trap. But this is where I think the teachers, meditators, stakeholders, they have to be always ready to update, you know, update and make it progressive. Putting... Yeah, Buddhist wedding ceremony, and why not a divorce ceremony also? <laughs> that might do good, good. That might do a really, and really nicely, you know, like. Yeah, I uh, am looking at my grandchildren. Yes. M more than any uh, grown-ups. It's for me the other way around. My son got me here. Yes, education. For some, especially for the children, so important. I can only tell you we are, I mean, there are a few pockets here and there who is trying, but uh, wow, on one hand, we are just not doing this job, but um, is um, SP here? SP is there, okay. I think he's not going to like what I say, but I will say it anyway. And this is, I'm just saying, I have no partisan, okay? I'm just saying this partly to tease people like SP, but I also mean a little bit. People ask me, do I like Modi? Modi? I said, yes. And, he's, and then they said, why? I said, because he doesn't speak good English. And I think that's, I think, I believe this is important. I hope I have managed to stir people. <laughs> that's it. Because he doesn't speak good English and that's so good, I think. I think it will encourage like, 
कर्नाटक तेलुगु संस्कृत पाली आई थिंक सो आई हेव इवन रिटन थिंग्स लाइक वेन ऋषि सुनक बिकम अफ इंडियन बट अ ब्रिटिश प्राइम मिनिस्टर दे आर लॉर ऑफ पीपल सेलिब्रेटिंग आई सेट ओ ओ हियर गोज द संस्कृत आउट ऑफ द विंडो हियर गोज तेलुगु बेंगोली because i feel that wow baron mccully may be really happy now there baron mccully right the indian educationist one mccully mccully yeah i'm sorry this is partially to stir some people but i also mean a little bit because i i feel that there's a little bit of awakening in india for their own things like oh we need to do this do that so maybe there's some hope i hope so because I, as you may have guessed for me you know the even though I was born in bhutan graced and educated and brainwashed by the tibetan <laughs> my you know like my i don't know just fast sometimes anger though sometimes anger and frustration but the love and the rom- this romantic feeling with the india is just so strong i think um there is a great um tibetan uh, master i forgot his name what's it i think he was a drupakaji master it was something like 700 years ago by the way okay so anyway this is like in tibet like long time ago and um in his biography i've read i really have to find his name and once he went to shikatse which is sort of close to the indian but not that close shikatse you know lhasa and shikatse and then there he so very very rare though some indian who are making dal i guess he said um santuk santuk means like bean soup right yeah bean soup Ye- yellow bean soup and flattened uh flattened edible thing made out of champa must be cham- uh, you know chapati i'm feeling and the guy got so excited this lama is like even the aroma of this dal and the chapati really transported him like to and he actually wrote in his biography that he has to be an indian in the past life he said that so maybe something like this because there's so much just so much wisdom and so much just uh, incredible like uh, so much paradoxy contradiction beauty of course the music and then of course rrr <laughs> <laughs> shall we stop here for lunch yeah yeah okay so be see you this afternoon